Flow leveling episode two fixes every problem in the series. From Chibi Reviews, let's see what he has to say. You hear that? No? Well, the reason for that is because this episode of... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Did you, did you, you hear, hear that? that? Oh, okay, he's asking the haters. No? Well... I don't hear no fucking chirping anymore! Well, the reason for that is because this episode of Soul Leveling silenced the haters from episode one. Now, to be fair, there is some valid criticism mm. that I have after watching episode two. Criticism after episode two? I thought most of the criticism was from episode one where people are saying they did a lot of world building exposition and they kind of baited us, but they kind of blue balled us. And the, the cliffhanger is not enough of a hook to draw the casual normie audience in. Obviously, we are solo leveling enjoyers, so we know what to expect. But, you know, for the normies, they might not enjoy it. I thought that was the criticism. But for the most part, this episode pretty much corrects Everything that was pretty much wrong with the first episode's premiere. Okay, tell me about it. Soul leveling, and let's just let's dive headfirst into that since I know that's going to be you know the title. It's going to have probably something to do with the thumbnail. Let's just get right into that. So, why did some people not like soul leveling? Why did people even hate the first episode of soul? Two things. I think first thing is people always will hate whatever is popular just to get a controversial opinion out there for negative engagement. Because if you say some controversial shit, if you say some hot takes, either intentionally or in unintentionally, usually intentionally, it's just to negative engagement farm, right? It's like, fuck your favorite show. And everybody's like, what do you fucking mean? Right? The other part is the actual valid criticism, which is the structuring of episode one. The contents of it was fair, but did it warrant the hook for one of the best or the most anticipated animes, you know, for this year and moving forward? No, but it was technically a one hour early premiere that got separated into two separate episodes. So it's not really its fault. So leveling. And why am I saying that episode two has corrected the fundamental issues that episode one had? Well, it all comes down to the premiere, the showcasing of what Soul Leveling has to offer. And we got to look at, you know, its original form, a.k.a. like, you know, the webcomic, or technically its original form would be the light novel, but we're looking at the webcomic, okay? Just bear with me for a second. But basically, if we look at the original form, the webcomic, and then we look at, you know, how this first episode and second episode was, it's very clear which technically would be better, what people's expectations would be. And in this case, when you sit down and, you know, you read Soul Leveling, Leveling, like the webcomic, you probably are going to read the first few chapters and you're going to get to this iconic scene at the end of the episode where our main character is pretty much left alone in this dungeon and, you know, the ending sequence of the chapter basically says, you know, you do you want to continue? You know, your heart will stop if you do not click yes. It's a Do you want to be a player, right? I think that is significant. What does that imply? A game menu shows up and says, do you want to be a player? quest courage of the week completed this is a game this world is suddenly a game we know that it's about portals opening monsters showing up humans somehow awaken with powers at the same time this is life to them this is just their real life but according to this game ui we're like living in a fucking simulation and this is a game and we become a player that's kind of interesting right legitimately crazy scene that happens here and it caught everybody by surprise for the first time they ever read this series if they were not spoiled and so as a reader it was just quite a shocking just moment it was quite a shocking beginning to the story and so when you factor in those emotions with you know this anime it makes a lot of sense why people didn't like episode one as much as they did and i think this fundamentally comes down to the runtime and hear me out Think about, you know, last year, just some of the anime that really just blew it out of the park in terms of just their premiere. Furiden, four episodes back to back to back to back. And then we're gonna, he's going to compare that with Solo Leveling, which didn't do a back to back. Thus, you know, the complaints, right? Oshinoko is a very good example. Okay, one hour premiere. Yeah. They had, like, hour-long premieres that gave enough context and just world-building and characters. Yeah, imagine Oshinoko didn't have the twist in the episode one, right? Imagine they just did like 40 minutes of build up and like nothing happened, you know? People will be like, what the fuck is this show? You know, what are we watching? Yeah, if they didn't include that, it just kind of falls flat on its face. Authorization to know what you're getting into. Like, I, I'm willing to bet you, Oshinoko and Free Run wouldn't have been such a smash hit as they were last year if it wasn't for the premieres being as long as they were. Osh I agree. 
I absolutely agree. I think a lot of people, not just because of the structure of the episodes where you cram in four episodes of freedom immediately to get rid of the... You're not getting rid of it, but you're getting a jump start to cover not really the most exciting moments that by episode five, which would be technically episode two, you know, next week, they start fucking dropping Stark and the dragon and all this crazy shit, right? Oshinoko too, right? The whole one hour premiere lets the perfect build up towards the plot twist at the end, which I won't spoil, but I did cry, right? And I think people just fundamentally love this like hour long fucking two hour long movie release episode one premiere it just gets everybody really hyped up going into the new anime community season in my opinion Oshinoko had a premiere spoilers by the way that went literally all the way up until like chapter 10 where I died which was a huge moment that really cemented like spoilers by the way <laughs> describes the chapter title where I died. <laughs> okay. What you're about to get into for the story of Oshinoko, and then spoilers for Free Run. You okay. Have the situation where like you get the whole context of what Free Run lost. You know the party she journeyed with, and the conclusion of it, and you know kind of where it stopped at with Fern and all that, and meeting her, and them traveling together. It was a nice, just you know, a presentation to the whole world and characters of Free Run. And I feel like, you know, those hour-long premieres really served a huge purpose of getting people into the story. And so, we fast forward to this episode, or Soul Leveling's anime in general, and I feel like a lot of people that were, you know, thinking about how episode one would be, would legitimately, you know, think that it, the first episode would end around here. For instance, like, the first episode would end exactly where, you know, our main character yeah. is just straight up getting butchered and And died. then the menu shows up. And then, you know, you're like, what's about to happen? And then, you know, this notification pops up. That should be end. the end. You know, yeah. this is what people wanted the first episode to end at. Now, to be fair... If the first episode would have covered all this content within a 20 minute runtime, it would have been rushed. It would have been Nobody's asking for that. We just wanted an hour long premiere, which they did in the early premiere, right? Because they did have like an early access premiere for all the VIPs and important people. And then they gave us the plebs, you know, two separated episodes later, right? Completely a mess. And people would have hated the first episode even more than they already did. Because yep. a lot of people felt the first episode, I'm going to be blunt here, boring. I, I noticed that. Like First episode, boring? Yeah, if you think from the perspective of a normie, just a casual person thinking, oh, new hype anime, so loving, everyone's talking about it. Then you fucking walk into an episode where half the time they're just talking about the fucking, oh, you kill this monster and this, this the monster drops this crystal. But actually, there's two type of crystals. One crystal is, is actually $80 from the e rank dungeon and it can get you, you know, fucking money and food. And the other one's for sustainable energy. It's like, no one gives a shit about that. No one gives a fuck about that. Well, some people care about that because it's important for world building i'm just telling you from the perspective of the average normie watching this shit expecting hype just episode one it's kind of just an exposition lore dump and then it just kind of sets up everything there is not really this exciting moment that you're hoping for which is technically in the first portion of the intro where you're seeing three years ago on jeju island against the ants and the s rank hunters right that's kind of hype but then the rest of it is just like just exposition, just intro, lore dump. So I don't expect people to say that, oh, it was the best thing I've watched. I agree, it should be, feel boring. When I was reading the comments on, you know, my video I made last week to looking at social media, a lot of people labeled Soul Leveling Episode 1 just extremely boring, nothing interesting. They were just completely disappointed with, you know, what it actually happened. I wouldn't say nothing interesting. No, there's a lot of interesting things happening. It's just that it's not interesting to them. They don't give a shit about the world building or any of the other shit that they're laying out. If you look at the things that they're decorating and telling us, I think it's very interesting. It's just not really hype, right? Had to offer. And I think the reason for that is because it obviously didn't have the content that people really know so yeah. leveling for. So, what I'm saying is, is that I feel like Soul Leveling would have been a smash hit, at least right off the gate, or right out the gate, if it would have had this episode in the first episode Agreed. combined into one. Agreed. Now, obviously, we don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. We know that Soul Leveling, unofficially, technically, was pushed back and delayed quite a bit last year. We know this. It should have aired early last year, but we know the reason for that. There was a lot of production issues going on, and clearly, thanks to all the delays, Soul Leveling looks as good as it does because of those delays. I mean, legitimately, you can't really deny just the quality of how good, you know, this episode and the previous episode looks.
You know what this means for my ReZero fans? Now, officially, ReZero isn't delayed by, you know, they didn't confirm it. But with the new anime, Yojo Sankyo or something, that's covering like 37 episodes by the same studio, White Fox or something, that should be making ReZero right now. I mean, maybe they're cooking up ReZero for something special, man, in the future. But, I mean, the point of the matter is, is that I feel like if this would have been an hour-long premiere, like a 50-minute, 40-minute premiere... Nobody would have complained about soul leveling's anime. People would have probably said that this was mm -hmm. the best anime of the season right yeah. out the gate. And yeah. no complaints would have probably been had besides those that just don't like soul leveling to begin with. So, yeah, just I wanted to talk about that because I feel like um, episode two really presents, like, you know, more to the story. It gives more about the character or MC here to what to expect from these dungeons and the worlds and what happens and why these dungeons need to be cleared. Like, you know, we find out if, like, these dungeons are not cleared, monsters you know, come out, break out of the yeah. gates and just come into the world. And, like, for instance, you have this creature, this statue that you see throughout this episode that is absolutely frightening. And imagine how, you know, scary this thing is if it was able to get out of the dungeon and start yeah, this is straight up Attack on Titan. This thing is taller than the Colossal Titan. But a part of me, honestly, if I was put into this dungeon, it's not the world's fault for doing this, but if I was put in that position, I was betrayed like that, I'd be like, fuck him. Fuck him. I hope this guy goes out and stomps on everybody else. Feel my fucking despair too. Start fighting. So that was like the true terror of what was going on within this episode. You're going to release them outside the world if you were to die? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> <laughs> kind of kind of true. I I kind of would have that feeling too. I'd be like, fuck them, dude. You fuck me. <laughs> fuck them too, dude. So what was revealed is that, you know, there's going to have to be a team that is able to defeat this. If not, well, it's GG, so to speak. So I really, really appreciate what this episode does for the series. Now, once again, this is coming from me as a original source reader. I have read a little bit of the light novel. I have read all of the webcomic, and it's a good series. Legitimately a really good series. And I feel like, you know, the way the anime is being presented now after seeing episode two... This is everything I wanted, known, and loved from and the more? original, and I'm glad to see it adapted to such a high quality. Okay. Like, this smile is so iconic. I love seeing it finally animated. Yes, this smile, I think everyone's been spoiled of this, right? Everybody's been spoiled of this, but if you look at the webtoon art versus the anime art, it's not fair to compare the two. It's like the same thing as comparing One Punch Man manga and the anime. There's an insider meme, right? The community meme is that the One Punch Man manga is better animated than the anime itself, which is a ridiculous statement because how the fuck can a drawing be better animated? But it kind of is because the drawing is just so much more detailed, so much better. The anime, it's good, but you should check out the Webtoon version, man. For the first time, it's amazing. Like, seriously, the angle and the way the expression is. It's perfection. Subarashi. Now, anyways, let's get into the actual animation and, you know, how the opening ending is as well. So the opening ending... People like the ending more than the opening. And I was shocked by this. I thought that people would love the opening more because of the... I don't know. They've been kind of teasing the whole K-pop, you know, fucking what you gonna get solo. And then the whole fucking rap solo thing too. The chorus, it hits. But people are like, nah, that shit trash. I love the ending more. The visuals are better. Uh, I'm sorry. The, people say the visuals for the opening is better, but they said the overall song, the music composition, whatever, for the ending is better. I'm like, huh, really? Shit. I guess I have the, I guess I have the wrong opinion. For this anime is, oh my goodness. Okay. Visually speaking, yeah. stunning. Oh my God. Like, I really like the visuals and I think there's really next to no. I couldn't even fucking look at the visuals because it spoils so much, dude. <laughs> Straight up, the opening reaction was me just looking into the chat, just spamming fucking emotes because the visuals, what's on screen, it's just complete spoilers, right? Complaints in terms of visual department for this opening. It is just, yeah. Apparently, the visuals for the opening was done by a Korean studio, okay. which I feel is perfect because FYI, it's a Korean you know, series, a you know, comic from Korea. So and the fact that you have. K-pop too, right? TXT or some shit, right? Have like a studio, an animation studio that works, I believe, on games as well. That did this opening. 
for soul leveling, it, it, it really falls in line with the art style. Like when you look at the way the characters move within this. Opening, no, I did not look. It, it I did really not look in. Look like the web comic come to life, and I appreciate that. I love how this was outsourced to them. I know some might have issues with that, but I think in the end, it keeps the integrity of soul leveling's actual art style intact. Now that's right. Only Koreans are allowed to touch this shit. Now, Just in kidding. In terms of song, I like the song. I don't know if it's going to be my favorite song. But I'll have to listen to it a few more times, but... I think the nature of the whole K-pop thing might have thrown some people off in the opening compared to the ending, which is a traditional Japanese anime-style ending, right? So I'm just trying to think of reasons as to why people are saying the ending is better than the opening. If you really think about the opening, though, when, when I listen to it, the visuals are stunning, but only the chorus... And, like, the rap solo is good. Everything around it that kind of, like, builds up to it is a little shaky. While the ending from the beginning is just solid. So, I, I think that's some comparisons I can make. I do like the opening song. Now, ending-wise, yo. Okay, visually great. Maybe yeah. not as, like, noticeably visually great as the opening. But everyone the says Everyone says that if you look at the ending visuals and, and, list, and read the lyrics, it pretty much tells you the plot of this show. And I'm like, huh, well, fuck, I better not read the lyrics then, huh? Oh my god, like, the song is definitely way better, in my personal opinion. See? See? This is the popular opinion. The song is way better from the ending than the opening, which I was shocked by. I thought people would be hyped as fuck on the opening, but nah. Ending is better, apparently. Than the ending, or the opening song. I get okay. this, like, very, like, backroomy type feel when I watch this ending song. and I thought it was straight out of a fucking um, old boy reference, right? Like, you're stuck in a fucking little hotel room and you're looking at one fucking CRT TV for the rest of your life. While there's this master that has a bunch of monitors looking at all the different people that's stuck in this, like, hotel-like room. I'm not sure if you've seen the movie, but you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know what the back rooms are, really, what you doing, you know? go look at internet, you know, culture right now. I mean, it's been the talk of the town for a while now. But anyways, I get a backrooms type vibe from just this ending song. And it makes a lot of sense because it's like, this is dungeons that are like randomly generated or whatever. Basically, mm. you don't know what's really inside Portals, of them, yeah. different monsters. And that's kind of like a little bit of essence what the backrooms are. And technically, our main character has kind of fallen into the backrooms, so to speak, because it's like, it was a completely new section of the dungeon nobody knew about. And then it's like creatures they've never seen before that could potentially be S-class tier monsters or even higher, maybe. But the point of the matter is, is that um, it just it fits in line with that theme. And I just I love this ending song. It's a very back rooms feeling. It's the exact vibe I get. And I hope I am not the only one that actually felt that after watching this ending song. Now, with all that being said, let's talk about the story. Okay. So, the episode in terms of story content is very basic. It's very straight to the point and all that. And to I don't survive. think anyone with a, you know, high IQ, you, like, you need a high IQ to watch this episode, okay? I feel like anyone's going to be able to understand what's going on. Basically, it's about a... Just survive. That's pretty much it. Don't let the statue stomp on you. ...group of people that got in over their head. They're in a, like, survival game situation, so to speak. The last man standing who can live, etc. And, yeah. you know, how can they survive? Selfishness, selflessness, all on full display. And eventually, you know, our main character pays the blood price and pretty much dies Literally. at the end because he was very, very selfless, even though he wanted to be selfish. And it's a very interesting episode. Character. And at the very end, the whole selfish, selfless thing, Jinwoo's mask kind of comes off, right? No more Mr. Nice Guy. He's like, fuck that guy. You have a family? I have a family too. Something about that moment felt so fucking real in me, man. It's like, damn, and he's like, the selfish people always gets to live. The selfish survive, and the selfless are the ones that are use as scapegoats. And that's exactly what happened here, man. And everyone else are just thinking for themselves, and you can't even blame them. I loved how real and authentic that was, and you can't even blame everyone running out. Because if you're in that situation, I guarantee you, you would not be a hero. You'd be doing the same shit. Driven episode showing what humans would do when they're backed up against the wall, when they have no option. You know, that was the best part. Yeah. Themselves over anyone else. Yep. And how some would even sacrifice themselves to save others. It's a nice little mind game and introduction to some of these dungeons. For instance, how these dungeons can be in the future. That they're not always going to be cooking 
cookie cutter or straightforward about, oh, you must kill a boss. There's clearly going to be a lot more to it than just that. It's a nice introduction to the world and the dungeon system and how our MC is as a character as well. So, I mean, it's a great episode. But story-wise, nothing too complicated. It is very straight to the point. So, besides all that, though, great episode. I truly think that any problems people theoretically had from the first episode are going to be corrected with episode two. What the fuck is this thumbnail, dude? Look at this freedom thumbnail right now, dude. What the fuck, Farron? But, guys, please go sub to Chibi's channel. Like this video if you did. I totally agree. I think episode two definitely clears any suspicions from the audience that are, you know, they're, they're saying that solo leveling's mid. Episode one, what the fuck was that, you know? It's like, I, we were expecting something great. I think if you've seen episode two, if you actually took your time to watch it, there's no way you can say that this shit is mid. Episode 2 should have had you fucking at the edge of your seats. Just fucking, just the anticipation, the excitement, the suspense of what's gonna happen while everyone is betraying Sung Jin Woo. And the fucking game menu opens up. Ooh, it's time to level, boys. Next episode, it's time to level.